Welcome to Communication Skills, Why Communication is Important. This resource is designed to initiate discussions with the learners around why communication skills are important. This resource presents an activity that can be used to introduce speaking and listening content. The activity is quick and high energy, it creates engagement, and it introduces powerful conversations about miscommunication. Now this is how you do it. All you need is a whiteboard, and you draw on the whiteboard a four by four grid. That's it. Sometimes you can get learners to draw it on their page, but I prefer just to do it on the whiteboard so everybody can see it. And then you're gonna draw this in. This is all you need to be able to draw. This is what I draw all the time. It works great. It doesn't look flash, but you'll see it comes together nicely. You can see that Pac-Man is in the top left-hand corner. Then we have ghosts, and then we have a door. Now the objective of this activity is that Pac-Man has to eat all of the ghosts in that building and escape out the door. That's the objective. And then there are the rules. Now the rules are really the area where learners will begin to initiate discussions around miscommunication and what words really mean and how things can go wrong. So you need to read these rules out and, and you'll probably be repeating these rules throughout the activity. So the rules are, number one, Pac-Man must eat all the ghosts and escape out the door. Number two, Pac-Man can move vertically and horizontally between the rooms, but not diagonally. And if Pac-Man enters a room with a ghost, he must eat that ghost. Four, once Pac-Man has eaten a ghost in the room, he cannot re-enter that room. Five, once Pac-Man enters the room with the door, he must leave. He cannot re-enter any other room. So this is a slightly more impressive version of the same puzzle, but the puzzle just written on the whiteboard uh, with the rough ghosts and the rough Pac-Man works absolutely fine. In fact, that's one of the great things about this puzzle. It's just so easy to do. I explain the rules to the learners and I ask them to think about how they could eat all of the ghosts and get out of the door. And what's great about this puzzle is it seems easy to begin with. So a lot of learners will often just yell out right from the start, oh, it's easy, I know how to do it. And so that's fantastic and I ask them straight away, great, come up to the board and show us how you would do it. And this is often what they do. I hand them a, a whiteboard marker and they mark out the path that Pac-Man would take. And usually they do something like this. They move along here, take out these ghosts, move down, and then stuck. And they realize, ah, oh, if they go into the room with the door, then they have to leave and they can't get back because they can only move up and down, not diagonally. So they can't get back and get those three other ghosts. So that gets the next people thinking about how they would do it. So often other learners have been looking at this and they'll be thinking they know how to do it and they know where the other learner went wrong. So I ask or invite somebody else to come up to see if they can solve it. And this is usually what they do. They move along much the same, taking out the ghosts, but at here they make a different decision. They decide to move straight down and then move like this until they get here and they realize, oh no, Again, they're stuck. They have to either go into the room with the door, in which case they are out of the building. They can't get that last ghost. And usually we go back and forward for quite some time trying to get the last ghost. And people begin uh, making notes on their paper. And eventually people get frustrated and will ask you to repeat the rules again because it seems like it can't be done. The solution. Now the solution is really found in the wording and most people will make uh, an unjustified inference and they'll actually be constraining themselves more than they need to. So you've assumed that there's a rule in play that really isn't in play. And if we have a look particularly at rule number three and rule number four, let's look at rule number three. If Pac-Man enters a room with a ghost, he must eat the ghost. And number four, once Pac-Man has eaten a ghost in the room, he cannot re-enter that room. Now, what most people are assuming is that means he can never re-enter a room twice, but it's not true. If you look carefully, you can see that the only room he's not allowed to re-enter is a room in which he has eaten a ghost. And if you haven't noticed yet, there is one room, well two actually, the one important room, that uh, doesn't meet that criteria. For example, here's Pac-Man, and uh, you'll notice that there are two rooms that don't have ghosts in them. There's the room with the door, and there's the room that Pac-Man started in. So Pac-Man just moves down, takes out this ghost, moves back again, and then Pac-Man is able to complete his mission, eat all of the ghosts, and escape out the door. And what we have now is a great setup for a conversation about communication, giving instructions, assumed 
or making assumptions about things and so on and so on. So this activity can set you up well for introducing communication skills. And one of the things I like to do immediately once we've finished it is to review what went wrong or what caused the difficulties in the activity. Was it a miscommunication? Were we assuming something was true? Uh, were we inferring something that wasn't really there? And then looking at who asked questions and how many questions they asked and whether they discussed it with their partners or so on and what kind of happened in the room in regards to communication with that activity. And then I simply open it up to them. Has anyone here ever experienced a miscommunication? And of course, there's lots of stories. And then distinguishing between the two types, when somebody misinterpreted you and when you misinterpreted somebody else. And then what are the ramifications in our sector if we miscommunicate? So this can help us look at some of the things that can go wrong, making assumptions, inferring, not clarifying, and so on. And then looking at some of the strategies that can mitigate this, asking good questions, asking people to repeat what they've said, repeating back to them how you interpret the instructions and so on. Thank you.